You're tuning in the Radio Movies, a special event podcast and collaboration between the Explosion Network, the Pop Culturist, and Dash Culture. Each week we'll be discussing the films from the Kevin Smith franchise, Viewer Skew Universe, our memories with them, why we love them, and preparing ourselves for the upcoming Jay and Silent Bob reboot. My name is Owen Blight, and joining me from the Pop Culturists, Ryan Betson. Howdy. Howdy. And from Dash Culture. Buddy Watson, snoochie boochies. There we go, straight into it. <laughs> got to get the there's there's there's, there's several episodes of this podcast. You've got at least a, a handful. You can change that up between episodes if you feel like. I guess <laughs> uh, today we're going to be talking talking about Clerks, the film that started this universe, of course, and also Kevin Smith's career back in 1994. For the sake of the show, we'll be presuming that you have watched the movie, and we will be talking with full spoilers. So, to kick things off, as we'll probably do each and every week, when was the first time you saw Clerks? Um, the first time that I saw it was, uh, I would have been like 16 or 15, I can't actually remember, but it was the last of Kevin Smith's films I actually ended up watching. I got to it last because it isn't black and white. I kind of hundred percent admit that. Like I was, I was a teenager. The idea of watching this black and white movie to me was like, I don't want to watch something that's in black and white. That sounds old. That sounds weird. That sounds low budget. That it sounds horrible. I'm not sure if that's something I actually want to <laughs> invest the time into watching, to be honest. Cause that's kind of how I viewed it. Like I, I, I after I watched Jane Silent Bob, uh, struck back, that's when I kind of discovered these movies. I was like, cool. Um, start investigating the rest, start watching the rest. And then I was like, well, I'm going to leave the black and white one to last if I like the rest. And I, it's a life lesson, really. Don't judge a book by its cover because I ended up laughing quite a lot. And now I would rank it um, in my higher end of the viewer skew movies, I guess, which is the life lesson there. But yeah, but buddy, what's your history of clerks? When's the first time you remember watching it? Firstly, if current Dylan could get into a time machine, he would go back in time and slap 16-year-old Dylan in the face. Like, yeah, pretty, pretty much. <laughs> because would, it's black and white, Dylan. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's so funny because these days, uh, if I hear, it's, it's, if someone makes a movie in black and white these days or anything, I'm just like, well, I don't care. You know, because I'm, now I'm a movie connoisseur, you know, like a proper, proper movie guy. I don't, I don't care about black and white. Yeah. When was the um, first time you watched it, though? First time watching this movie... I would say maybe in high school or it could have been, it may have even been after high school. This is, I think something that I was kind of (coughs) hadn't seen and like went back after kind of watching some Kevin Smith movies. So I can't really pinpoint when it was. It might've even been 2004, year 12 for me. Um, Yeah. So that's 2005. Yeah. So that's that's around. It's well, it's funny because I'm thinking I'm like that might like time wise because the age different uh, the age difference. I'm thinking that might end up being like roughly the same time we were watching it, kind of around the same time, but yeah, different well, ages. Well, Clerks, <laughs> two com- Clerks, Clerks two comes out in 2006, so I saw that in cinemas. Um, so I definitely seen. Oh, so, fuck, fuck, my English is terrible. Definitely. Uh, Saw? Seen? I don't know. I don't even know what the Whatever. correct freaking pronunciation is. Um, but I definitely watched Clerks 1 before that. I just can't really pinpoint on the timeline where it was. Hmm. But no, it definitely um, wasn't the first Kevin Smith movie that I watched. No. I, I, I doubt it is. The only people whose this would be the first would have been like, would be your movie connoisseurs or whatever, your movie buffs back in the 90s, I guess. You know what I mean? Like, I doubt... A lot of kids our age back then, like if I was sixteen when it originally came out, I wouldn't have probably watched it as well. You know what I mean? Black and white, random, random small budget indie movie. I'm watching fucking Star Wars or Jurassic Park or whatever else is out then. I guess if I was around that age, I don't know. Mm. Um, yeah, Ryan, when was the first time you remember watching Ooh. it? See, I think I think mine skews probably ra- around the same as Buddy. Like I can remember the order that I saw. Uh, like my first three Kevin Smith movies at least. So I remember seeing uh, Jay and Silent Bob on VHS at my mate's place. I think it would have been like, what, 11 or something. 11? Uh, Jesus. <laughs> I don't remember how old I was. What year did that come out? 
2001. 2001. I would have been, if it came in, it came out on home release, yeah, it would have been 11. Uh, no, wait, I'm on 89. I would have been 12. 13, somewhere around there. Probably 12. Um, so I think I remember being in primary school, but yeah, so I remember watching that when I was like young and <clears throat> being like, this is full of swears and it's full of bright colors. This shit's awesome. Uh, and then nothing until clerks two came out on home release. I remember, I remember being at the video shop, seeing on the poster on the wall. I'm like, fuck yeah. Clerks two. I remember Jay and son, Bob, I'm going to check it out. And that's where similar to you, Dylan, like that's where it came down to. I'm going to invest everything into these. And I think clerks may have been later. It wasn't the latest, the last one. I think uh, Chasing Amy may be in the last one I saw. Really? Uh, but I only because only I, if I didn't remember right where I grew up, it was hard. For some reason, I couldn't get Chasing Amy at the video store. Like I could get I could get Clerks and More Rats and all the other ones, no problem, but I couldn't get Chasing Amy. Um, yes. Would you say you, you were Chasing Amy? I was Chasing Amy. <laughs> Um, so I, yeah, I think clerks was probably like my, the second last one that I saw. And I did, like, I'll admit, I, as similar to Dylan, man, like that black and white made it tough. It took, I think there may have been a couple of sit through a couple of starts and I'm like, Oh, this is, I'm just not feeling it. Hmm. But then as I, as I got older, I would, re, you know, I, I ended up watching it in full, but as I got older and, you know, started doing my fair share of server jobs, I, um, it, I came back to it. <laughs> yeah which is kind of a good point to go into the second topic i was going to bring up which is i like re- i rewatched this before we record this obviously and i think the last time i watched it was probably two years ago ish maybe a bit less than that um and every single time i've watched it since i've worked in my current job which i'm about to hit i don't even like saying it which i'm about to hit eight years in right so a very long time and it feels like a very long time, which is a customer service job. And every time I watch Clerks while I'm working here, I just relate to this movie so much. Like, oh, it's and, and it's not even that's the exact same job, but there is something very similar about that convenience store setting to where I work, which in a small sort of like petrol station thing, because it's not like a massive store. Um, you know, with heaps of sections or whatever else, it's a fairly tiny building, and um, the the place in which Clerks takes is uh, takes place is a rather tiny little conv- you know, as it says, convenience store, I guess, in the in the title. And everything I hear, no, no matter the amount of times I can hear him say, "I'm not even supposed to be here today," I have, without even meaning to, said that to like someone at work, and then like clicked on after the fact. You know, like some customers come in and be like you look pretty angry today i'm like yeah well i got called in on my day off i'm not even supposed to be oh like you know so there's so many things and just re- relating to freaking randall and just wanting to yell at customers and like, <laughs> get sn- s- snappy at people and whatever else so and there's no other movie that kind of re- relates so well and does the the retail whatever section of job stuff th- that gets it like this and that's because obviously kevin smith was uh, working this job before he, uh, well, no, not before. While he was making this movie, he was working this job. So it's like written into it exactly. It's such a a, a thing that you just get and connect with, I guess. Do, do you have like similar uh, connections to it or any parts for like previous jobs, buddy? 110%. I've only ever worked in retail. So for me, I think I was in the same job when I was working at the pharmacy for 12 years. And even though I, I say pharmacy, pharmacy's retail like it's not beat around the bush you're serving customers interacting with customers Mm -hmm. and then for me to kind of be in the current job where i am now um and and the role that i was doing before this uh at at, you know dvd store (laughs) um yeah so many of it so much of it is so relatable what the fuck you do that for two reasons one i hate it when people can't shut up about the stupid tabloid headlines oh jeez and two to prove a point title does not dictate behavior what if title dictated my behavior as a clerk serving the public i wouldn't be allowed to spit water at that guy but i did so my point is that people dictate their own behavior even though i work in a video store i choose to go rent movies at big choice agreed you are a danger to both the dead and the living well, that'd be more relatable to like. There's the section in um. There's a section where it cuts to Randall and he's like, 
uh, all these people coming in like, should I watch this movie? Like, is it any good? Like, oh, or, have you seen the, have you seen this movie? Is it out? And it cuts to like that sign with all the arrows or whatever. That's, that's like, it's that right here. That is totally what happens to me. Like we're in the new release sections. I'm like, they're just over here. And then I walk <coughs> two steps and then I point at this big sign that says new releases. Yeah. Or, um, you know, so many times people come in like, what's a good movie? And I'm like, oh, well, yeah. where does one fucking start with that question? Or have you seen this? Is this good? As a as a side note on that, I hate um, so every now and then, like when my grandparents come around or something like that, and because they know I'm like in the movies and stuff. But like, have you seen any good movies lately, Dylan? And I'll be like, Well, yes. Fine, like, you're what, good. what do you? Yeah. What's what's your definition? Like, what do you want to? Yeah. But yeah, I can't imagine getting asked that all day because it fucking annoys me when my grandparents ask it. Oh, ask man, me that little and that. It's a it's a tough one. Um, Ryan, do you? Yeah, so like uh, one of my first jobs was working in like a two dollar shop. It was like a Golo was the brand in in here in Victoria. Oh, nice. Um, so there, yeah, part of that job was yeah sitting at the de- at the front. Like, so the people that would go to stock shelves and the one person that would just have to stand at the register all day, and you just sit there, want to punch each other in the face, and yeah, and then moving. I think because I the probably the longest running job that I've had has been at McDonald's. So Clerks do probably has a bigger place in my heart in terms of yeah, yeah. connectivity. But then when I after uh, after Mac, as I worked in Dan Murphy's for a while, and it's just the stupid people, and it's the it's the conversations that they have in that in those workplaces that are more connected to me. Like I have had mad long conversations about unnecessary Star Wars shit and just Batman and shit, like just mad conversations, and all because you're just killing time at a poo job. Mm. So, like the the in terms of the the discussions that they have, maybe not the job itself, but that is certainly a big thing for me personally. Mm. Did you did you ever bring up like did those other people watch like know of Clerks or anything like that? Uh, yeah, a handful of people like um at my at Golo no, uh, but it, yeah, in Dan Murphy's there was a buddy of mine who was also a big fan too. Uh, he was full into the pods, like tell him Steve, Dave, and all that shit too. So we had a big connection, a big connection there. But um, yeah, regardless, we would just bitch and stuff. See, the problem with like with yourself, Dan, I imagine you work alone a lot of the time. That yeah, we I have a fifteen minute crossover, and then it's just alone for the entire time. Which, I mean, Randall's um, did, well, both of them, Dante and Randall, are supposed to work alone. I guess it seems <laughs> <laughs> supposed to, yeah. But yeah, because like that's the one, one of the most relatable things about that movie is there. When someone else gets bored and they go, huh, and they just wander over and like, I don't know, here's a random thought that just happened. Bleh. There is so much of that at my workplace. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's almost like ingrained into the culture of, of where I work. And when I was in DVDs, uh, I had so many of those type of conversations with... um so many different people from movies. One one staff member in particular that used to work there that got transferred to another store, Nate. Um, he was he's quite well well read, um, quite well educated uh, into a lot of different uh, political theories and history and uh, random movies and had you know bookshelves worth of books and he was quite. Uh, quite an intellect and quite someone quite stimulating to talk to, but we'd have these just stupid conversations about the most random of shit from movies or, you know, how would this be or that person is just totally inappropriate and insane. And um, it's, it's very similar to a lot of the conversations that are <laughs> popping up in Clerks. Yeah, because like mm. in, in Clerks, there was the big discussion about the roofer uh, and stuff like that and the people uh, and the the the, the uh, l- non stormtroopers that worked in the death in the Death Star, like I remember having a, like just that same like level of meticulous discussion. I think Dark Knight Rises had came out at that point, and we had a massive rant about how uh, Bruce Wayne got from giant well in the sand back to Gotham. Uh, and then ability to climb a fucking bridge and like all these different steps that had to take place before he could, yeah. That's unnecessary di- deep diving into stuff. Is where is I kind of miss it. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, well, surely you do to a degree. Wouldn't you still have similar sorts of conversations ever with? I do, but um, a lot of the guy, a lot of people that I work with, because of uh, what ails them, they tend to fixate in different ways, and they won't. Uh, they they have difficulties extrapolating outside of their thought line. 
Okay. So where at other job people would they, people would you know tangent off like champions and bring it all back. Mm. Um, yeah, these guys tend to get stuck on a point. Couple things in here. I'll, I'll move on to the next. Thing. I was going to ask like what everyone's favorite moment line or like scene or what have you from this is. And the one Ryan mentioned before is my my favorite scene from this because I found it so funny and like so smart the first time I ever watched mm-hmm. it, which is the the Star Wars Death Star conversation because it's like that is I haven't had that exact conversation, but I have had weird conversations like that with people you know like what if the people who worked on the thing are do- like really just obscure random stuff where you're just like shit talking with friends and stuff like that and the idea of the- them I just mean, behind their like, you know offer. there must have been I bet they brought independent contractors in on that thing plumbers aluminum siders roofers and not just imperials is that what you're getting at? exactly in order to get it built quickly and quietly they'd hire anybody that can do the job I think the average stormtrooper knows how to install a toilet main. All they know is killing in white uniforms. The fact that they All have right. this old person come in and be like, I work in construction. Let me answer. I'll, <laughs> I'll have you and answer your questions. And, you know, we don't get paid too well and all this other stuff. It just, like, is quite uh, really re- well written. And, like, it's the first example of many throughout Kevin Smith's history of him being able to kind of speak to a certain generation mm-hmm. and audience that no, I don't think anyone else before him had you had other similar directors and writers kind of speaking to more like skater dudes or like you know young hip uh, uh, link later or wh- whoever you want to pick uh, speaking to certain sort of audiences i guess but kevin smith was like the first to address young nerdy kids i guess mm-hmm. like and, and have these conversations play out that didn't seem um weird or unrelatable they were fully like relatable and i still think they are to this day even though i can tell you these days I, I, I give zero fucks who died on a Death Star. They were all bad, you know. They knew what they signed on for, and like that, that's that's. If you want my opinion on that actual thing, I'm like, <clears throat> if if you get a contract, you're like, it is a lot of money to come work on the Death Star, but we all know the Empire's bad. Mm. Yeah, but it's a lot of money. Look, you took the risk. You, but it's, it's something that's that you've <laughs> aged with because when you first hear that, you're like, yeah, why would you work on the Death Star? That seems like a horrible decision regardless of the money. But as I've gotten older, I'm like, I'm on the side of the uh, contractors. Like, I will probably would have taken that money. <laughs> like, you know, you know, now I've got a family and I've got things, to, you know, like my – it's one of those things. Like, you – the be- the beauty of that little conversation is how over time it changed – like, I feel anyway that I've changed my stance on that. Um, and saying that, like with that terms of that discussion, there has been times, you know, back when I used to work at, at Dan's, um, where we would be serving customers and sort of talking our garbage across the counter to each other. Yeah, and occasionally some, you know, people similar ages would would jump in and get involved. And that's probably one of the greatest feelings of like working in retail is bullshitting and then clients mm. yeah, customers get involved and you're like, Yeah, man, cool, cool, cool. You have that moment with them and then they bugger off and you keep going. It's very fun. Yeah, we, ha- we we get that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, in your workplace, you would though, and that's kind of what I would be jealous of. Whereas, because I just serve uh, old people or like farmer types, you know, like and they're in it, they're in and out, out. like they're like beep and they go. Yeah, and they're they're in and out and whatever else. But yeah, the idea of someone jumping in and a, like or just picking up on music I'm even listening to in the background doesn't even happen. But yeah, do you, what do you have like a good example of that, buddy? Like. Some customer. Like customers jumping in. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I um, can't think of anything in particular, uh, but, you know, we might put an album on and all of a sudden, you know, we're listening to it. I haven't heard it before. The other staff member is talking about it and what year it came out. And, you know, it was a couple of years ago. Yeah, it was in between these albums. I'm like, yeah, this is so good. And the customer would overhear it. I'm like, yeah, what is this? So-and-so. And then they'd recognize that it's this artist and you'd have a whole conversation about the discography and, what they mm. did and whether they've heard it, and all of a sudden that customer's buying that CD. Same <laughs> thing. Same thing happens with, I guess, movies, and brings brings it back, you know, around to your point before. What it was, what are some of my favorite moments in the film? Something mm. you said before was the lady buying the the, the uh, renting the two VHSs. Yeah, She's yeah. like, you know, what are these two? They there's not enough reading on the back. They never tell you they're good, and um, you know how he kind of doesn't want to get involved in the decision making process. There is so much of that when customers will come in like, w- w- what's good or w- what's things? And it's just so hard to re- approach that s- that without kind of stepping on people's tastes and likes without personally mm. offending them. But then yes. there are other customers that will come in. You'll have like cinephiles and you can talk to them today. It's like, oh, you've seen this? Yeah, it's a good movie. Oh, you know, the person that wrote that wrote these two films and this mm. is, you know, Wind River was the first one he directed himself and you like those kind of things and you might like this 
you know, the, the Fincher film that I recommended for you a couple you know, a month ago that you hadn't seen, the game. There are so many times I've come in and, you know, people are like, what's a good thriller? Like, I liked Fincher and that. I'm like, well, you like Fincher. You've seen the game, right? Like, no. So many times I've sold that, no, that Literally movie. Literally the conversation you had with me recently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. But there'll be so many of those conversations around other things as well um, that, that are quite rewarding like that too. But <laughs> doesn't mean to say I don't get the bad, the bad kind of customers that come in also mm. that are just... I wouldn't say tie kickers, but it's just like, you know, I've had customers that have come in this reek of alcohol and drunk or, you know, like, oh, what's this? Or, or people that are asking you for your opinion and recommendations and then just throwing it in your face. It's like, well, you asked, what what do you yeah, want me to do? Don't ask me then, dude. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, what's your favorite moment then, Ryan? Or scene or whatever? Uh, for some reason, think like I'm, if I'm trying to think about moments that I always refer to. One of them is is Chulie's gum. I always I refer to Chulie's gum literally yesterday, um, because I just love that good that ra- random guy barging in and having a big old tirade. I think that's great, and just hmm. hanging out and just annihilating any customer that come in. Loved it, absolutely loved it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the other one I'm a big fan of is um, of, uh, uh, Navy Seals. <laughs> all the time I'll reference Navy SEALs for no reason. No one will understand it but me, and I giggle, and then that's all I need. <laughs> What's the Navy SEALs? It's when the guy walks in and he's like, ooh, Navy SEALs. They never rent quality flicks. They always pick the most intellectually devoid movie on the racks. Ooh, Navy SEALs. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. yeah, the rent- <laughs> yes, okay, yes, yes. Yeah, they're always like, getting what? shit shit movies. <laughs> Navy <Yeah>. SEALs. <laughs> Where are the new releases? New releases. <laughs> you, know, you know the movie with I'll- the guy? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the one yeah. and the thing. The guy I get and the that. Stuff I get that so many, so many <laughs> times. I've got that so many times when working in DVDs. What's that movie with that guy or mm. the movie, the one about the thing? Um, except in my job, I like the challenge of trying to figure it out. You know like? <laughs> You're like, okay, we're playing. T- we're playing. T- we're playing right, twenty questions. 20 Where do questions. we start? What do yeah. you got? <laughs> Who is he? What has he been in? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who else is in it? My um. My freaking pop does the, the thing all the time. He's like, oh, I was watching this movie the other night. And I'm like, yeah. He's like, it was real good. It had that guy in it. I'm like, okay, yeah. Um, did it look new or old? Like, it, then I start the game, you know, like, you start like, and you're like, okay, was was the star old or young? It's like, oh, it was young. Was he white? Like, where are we? <laughs> <laughs> start playing the whole game and working out there. Yeah, my, my only, um, the other two things I was going to shout out from favorite moments is obviously the, as I mentioned before, I'm, I'm not even supposed to be here as like a, a, a calling sign I, I swear for you know for for a certain type of people who have worked in this this position um and then the other thing that made me even when i watched it again the, the a, a couple of days before re- recording this or whatever the the salsa shark thing oh, like, that's so funny shark, <laughs> that is so that is so funny because it's the it's literally the type of thing that if you could never seen clerks I guarantee people have probably at least thought of that or done that. You know what I mean? Like it's just such a it's such a small moment in the movie, but it's that's like why the writing I think is so good with this movie. It's just like such a small little detail, but it's so good at the same time. Yeah, I, I love that. Dun, 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 dun. Or oh, oh, another thing I was going to shout out was the um the Wookie song. Oh my god! Yes, <laughs> holy crap! That Wookie song. That oh. I can't praise that Chewbacca. I can't, get, can't remember who sings it, but that that has been has has heavy rotation in my house for like the longest time. That's such a weird song to have playing or in any point or time or history. I think, but uh, I just love it. I just it's just so <laughs> stupid. It weirds me out. I love is my, it. Is my problem with it? It's just it. It sounds so freaky. I was trying to look up quickly because I'm like I couldn't remember who's actually done it. So I was like, I'll look it up on the go here, but. It actually weirds me out. Uh, su- Artist is Supernova. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. So uh, the Chewbacca music song, which is real weird because you would have think like they would have had to get lic- licensing or something. I don't know. Because it is like, it sounds like proper Wookiee stuff, but it's like, does Lucasfilm not own the rights to sounds? Or, well, because it's not how, quite fair it's use, not, I guess. It's similar. It's not exact. It's that weird line. Guess, like, it's not a yeah. sample. It's, yeah. See, they, they, speaking of the soundtrack, though, that's the one thing with Clerks probably the mo- uh, the original clerks anyway is uh, the other in the other films in the viewers universe like obviously particularly clerks 2 is a big one for me uh the music here didn't really fit my tastes where like 
if I think of Clerks 2, I think of Smashing Pumpkins, 1979, um, Alanis Morissette's Everything, which is the song mm. that my wife walked into uh, in our wedding because I heard it from Clerks 2 and it meant so much to me. Um, really? Yeah, dead set. So, like, with Clerks, the soundtrack isn't quite there for me. And it, it, it really bummed me out because, like, after well, experience, like, you know, or seeing all the other movies and then coming back, I'm like, ooh. There, he, there's no money for it. Well, yeah, and I think it comes down to, uh, the, <laughs> to independent artists, you know, and just things yeah. we haven't heard. And, um, yeah. I feel like for all his other movies, um, like Ke- I, Kevin Smith, I wouldn't say, like, is obviously, like, a huge movie buff. And he doesn't, like, write his movies like Quentin Tarantino where the music's, um, like, written into part of the script. I remember there, but I feel like for, I remember there being an I interview like he, where he literally just picked up stuff that was on his iPod. Yes. Yeah, so he, he always like the music that's in his movies is like part of him and stuff. But it's, I, w- I wouldn't call it um, integral either. But yeah, definitely with Clerks, I feel like if he had more money, then we may have got more songs used for added or like different scenes and stuff like that. But it's like there was simply no money for yeah. this movie to ever well, when, get licensed. When it, sh- when it showed, it didn't have any music, did it? Uh, I think yeah, I think the music came later. And they picked that up after the the got, you know, got picked up by Miramax or whatever. And then they added the music all into it. Hmm. Which makes sense, I guess. Like, mm. oh, you've got a little bit of money now that Mirax is brought in. <laughs> you can buy some licenses, do what's yeah. necessary here. Um, but talk, talking about that, I did want to go over a, fun, a few funny bits of trivia that always stand out to me about this movie. Um, the first one, of course, is, in case people don't know this, Kevin Smith, when he made this movie, well, the story goes that he was in, he was in film school or whatever. Um, it's where he met Scott Mosier, who became his uh, producer on all of these movies. Um. Yeah, and then he he doesn't produce them anymore because Mojo went off and was working on fucking Spider Man animated series and whatever else and it the was. Grinch and uh, that Turkey movie. Yeah, that Turkey movie. <laughs> yeah, I forgot what it's called. That was the one that does the first one he sort of did away his own directorial From, de- debut. Yeah. Um. Mm. So he went away, but he he helped him many Freebirds. more years. But then that Freebird, that is it. Yes, I was like, what is the name of that movie? But yeah. Um. He. <laughs> So we met him in that and he's like, oh, fuck this shit. So they, they drop out of uh, film school or whatever. And then he sells his comic collection and maxes out X amount of credit cards to make this movie. And to a lot of people, I feel like you could say that is stupid. That is uh, disastrous. That's, uh, you know, completely not a very good decision to make at all. Like that's the kind of thing your mom or dad or whoever would turn to you and be like, no, do not do that. That is a very bad decision. Never make these sorts of decisions. And, you know, in a lot of a lot of ways, that's absolutely true, of course. But also it's a kind of story that I really love hearing about where it's like someone just went, you know, what? fuck it. Here's my dream. If this doesn't work out, I'll end up paying this back for the next 10 years of my life, whatever. But I'm going to shoot my shot. I'm going to sell all my shit. I'm going to fucking max out these credit cards. And then I'm not going to go for the rest of my life saying I didn't at least try because fuck it, I want to do this. And that's why I always love about this story. It was just, you know, it's a guy literally being like, I want to do this thing. And I'm willing to put my non-existent money where my mouth is. (laughs) (laughs) Have you want to say and uh, go about it? But yeah, do, do you feel the same way about that, or are you like, oh man, he's so crazy? Like, why would you do that? I would never do that, buddy. How do you? Do you are you like, oh no, he's, Kevin Smith's oh, crazy? Yeah, personally, I probably wouldn't make be making those decisions if I knew what I knew now. And and when I was a bit younger, I, maybe I would have just uh, made a, a rash, more rash decision like that. Anyway, but I've always kind of been money conscious. But yeah, I applaud people that have that that in them. I mm. never look at people and go, well, that's a stupid move. Um, if they're doing it for the right reasons, whether they succeed or fail, at least like you, what you're saying is that they they went for it. If yeah. they're doing it for stupid reasons and and other uh, and other things and and blowing money and pissing pissing it up the wall, um, then yeah, that's just maybe irresponsible. Um, yeah. But you know, he's what he's doing. He's making movies, trying to trying to progress yeah. and and <clears throat> become a filmmaker. And uh, yeah, it worked out for him. So I applaud people that have that kind of, um, I guess. Risk ta- risk taking ability in them. Yeah, I was about to say you just call it balls or whatever you want. Yeah, balls, yeah. <laughs> so the, like, the this- thing is, uh, I've always like up, up until I got my probably my last full time job, not the one I have now, but the one I before that. Like I'd mm. I'd always been poor. I was a poor uni student, so like I never had any money. So the idea of like doing that seemed painful to me. 
Like, as much as I respect it, I'm like, oh, I, I, I would never do it. Never do it. Because, like, it wasn't, an, and even then I couldn't, because by the time I got a full-time gig, or, or at least enough money to sustain myself, I'd already moved in with my wife. So it's like, I never had that that uh, moment of, like, oh, I could do this. I could throw everything into the wind and just do it. Hmm. I guess. Respect the shit like, out of in the, in the world where it doesn't work out, he would have just ended up working at that quick stop for, like, x amount of years for the rest of his mm. life and just paying off these credit cards and that would have been it you know he, he would have just been a guy who had fucking bills for a, like the rest of his life which i mean <laughs> fucking ha, what percentage of america probably has bills for most of their life uh you know people over there anyway so he would have just been another s- statistic on the the windshield of life really mm. i so, know so many people that go overseas and spend twenty thousand dollars on a credit and you know, a credit card and pay that off over that's, X amount of years. Oh, that scares the shit out of me. That scares so, yeah. I um I, I my credit card's only for a couple thousand and that's solely because if I haven't maxed it out, I'm like not the end of the world. You know, it's a couple thousand. Which yeah, is the yeah. most the most I'd ever be willing to like chuck yeah. on it. But yeah, I anytime I meet someone who's like got ten, twenty thousand, you know, et cetera, credit cards and they they've got them stuff and I'm like, no, you're you're mad. You're 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 mad. That's yeah. seeing that number to me is yeah. absolutely a, a nightmare and the idea that the idea that he sold his comic book collection or whatever and got like 15 grand or whatever and then maxed out i think it's four or five, around a similar yeah. yeah it's like four or five um on a, a couple credit cards that were each or whatever the idea of being like i just sold all this stuff which was my life well, the, the and that was come there it was about 24 Five thousand dollars to make, I think. So it's for yeah. Which base. these days, if we just, t- I mean, I'm not actually, I'm not actually good at working out this sort of maps so or know what I'm talking about. But let's just say it's like around that much. Then maybe it would be around forty. Let's just double it. So it's like, yeah, with, it with like inflation, 40, you're probably days. sitting like yeah, thirty five, forty. Yeah. In, yeah. in fairness, though, now we have better technology. To that's true things. yeah i, so that I reckon it would iPhone. be cheaper yeah <laughs> i reckon it'd be cheaper to make there, it now. there is a good argument to be made for that because um and we'll come back to that in a little bit actually what about but, soderberg fucking shooting shooting <laughs> movies off iphone 7 or whatever <laughs> yeah i was about to say people literally make fucking um there was that movie tambourine tangerine yeah Did tangerine. You see that yeah, one? tangerine tangerine that was filmed in, yeah so shot in the Thailand phone um absolutely mad the, the other thing that's really interesting to me um about this movie is there was an alternative and en- ending yeah where, um dante is like Ra- randall leaves the store does his whole like weird dance out the doorway or whatever and you can find this on youtube i'll, I'll link it in the show notes in case i'll to save you a hot two seconds but he, he you know walks out the store dante goes behind the counter he begins counting up the register or something like that i think um and then it kind of the camera goes outside and it kind of goes to like this first person view i guess is what you'll call it it's like following this person in and then the camera looks up at him and then um dante says oh sorry we're, we're closed right now whatever and then it cuts across and it shows this robber pull out a gun shoot him dead and then the, the camera just stands there in a still shot as you see the person go behind the counter grab a bunch of money and then walk out the door and then it cuts to show um him dead behind the counter just laying there and it's like he's dead and then it would and then it cuts the credits that was the original ending until uh I think Miramax, I guess, or someone there told him like, no, you should change the ending. And then that's when they, they, they changed the slow the zoom out. And that slow zoom out is awesomely iconic. I love that. It's yeah. a much better well, ending yeah, than the fucking the, the new ending is the, the, what the new ending, the, the ending that we got is a lot better, but I always found the original ending really interesting. Cause um, I think to, till this day and Kevin Smith or like vocally always talks about th- this sort of thing. Like his movies, I think always, uh, he wears his emotions, I guess, on his sleeve a lot, even if you don't think that. It's like to a lot of people, it's like Kevin Smith movies are fart jokes and um, whatever, but like surely they're all just comedies. How much can there be to them? But I'm like, each one kind of represents a period mm-hmm. um, in his life. And, and, and as we talk about the rest of the Viewer Skew movies, you can, we can kind of point out these things about different stuff that's happening in his life at the time and you can kind of um, see what's going on there. But I think this is really important because it, to me, if I was making a similar movie, if someone was like, you could make for cheap uh, a comedy or whatever set in your job, Dylan, it wouldn't be a comedy. And it would probably end with, t- to be honest, I- I'd-, I'd-, I'd be like, well, I-, I would have the main character die or something probably too, or fucking as, as horrible, how horrible as it sounds, if I was to make a movie about someone in my job, in my position, I would probably end up making a movie about someone who gets so stressed, they fucking end up killing themselves or something. You know, that's where my head would automatically, 
completely go because of the darkness of it. So I always kind of feel like with him having that character die at the end, it kind of represents how he was feeling in that job at the time. You know, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Like, yeah, down on kind it. of. I don't, I don't like the idea of it though. I think it changes the whole tone of the movie. It does. It does. Yeah. But I think it has a point. Like, the, 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 with, if he, if he dies at the end of the movie, to me, it's like he, it, it's him saying everything that he's gone through on this day, um, being here on the wrong day, this job. It's like, and you could just get shot like that. So he's like, it's fucking, you know, pointless shit. You know what I mean? Like yeah. saying something. Oh, no, no, something. Well, I'm sorry. We're closed. <laughs> Like I, th- I think there's p- part of it is just how do you end a movie like this? Because the movie doesn't have a big, long, overarching... Con- you know, there's no real big conflict in the middle. There's no nothing to really resolve. It is a day-in-the-life-of day movie. So, like, how yeah. can you end it with some sort of punch? Like, um, you know, in true any fan of Kevin Smith fashion, there was a window of time where I tried to write my own movie, and it was it was based around... Um, at the time I was working sort of part-time at a comic book shop in, in Melbourne. And so I wrote it around that. And as that was the, one of the killer things was like, wh- how do you end this? Like, what's the resolution here? And I couldn't, I, for the life of me, I couldn't work it out. So I may, maybe Kev was in that same, in that same situation. It was like, how do I end this? Like what you write fade to black and then credit. Yeah. But I mean, like, <laughs> but it's one of those things. Like, if you're like, what's is the last, if the only move I ever make, you know, you leave them with something. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, depends on how you feel about it, I guess. Hmm. I don't know. I, I just love the, the idea that, you know, he wasn't supposed to be there. This day's been kind of fucked up in so many different levels. Um, but then, you know, kind of at the end of the day, he's like, what are you doing tomorrow? Yeah, I'm working tomorrow. What are you yeah, doing tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'll see you then. It's kind of like survival of, yeah. of the fittest. And it kind so. of That's encapsulates it. that kind of um, that experience for that kind of person that's in that job, like like what Randall was saying before, that anybody could just walk in here and take our job. You just push a b- couple of buttons. You think it's so much more important than what it actually is. Um, actually surviving that and being able to to be in a job like that, like for yourself, Dylan, and you were working in retail for the same job for eight years. I worked in a job for 12 years. I'm almost four years at my job now. Like when it cuts to the chase, our jobs aren't important and yeah. – you know, I guess for that generation, Gen X, and maybe even now, our our kind of generation where we fall, you always, you get this kind of like, why am I here? What is my importance? Am I meant for something bigger? Mm-hmm. And the very fact that you have that kind of day or you have that, you're in that kind of environment and you're able to kind of push through and like, well, reset, see you tomorrow. It's kind of, I like that kind of message that, you know, it's not the job that fucking overran him or this was the risk of the job or, yeah. or that kind of thing. I love that it's like, well... All this shit happened, but fuck, I'll be here tomorrow and I'll see you then. Like, because I think, yeah, I, th- I think that works in a good way for what you're saying there, buddy. The idea that at the end of the day, it is almost like a soft reset. Regardless of what happened the day before, you come in the next day and you just start from scratch. And I'm an absolute huge fan of um, doing that when I get home from work. Yeah. I know my job's not, you know, life changing or whatever. And I, I don't need it to be a life changing. I don't need to be a doctor or a fucking brain surgeon or, you know, an astronaut or some, you know, just, whatever whatever else is important you know police officer or something like that i don't need to be one of those but um maybe i do need a little bit more self-actualization in my life where i feel like i'm making some more kind of contribution so when i get home i finish work i totally switch off as soon as i step out of work i'm done and i see so many other people um I guess including my wife, and she brings work home, and that's just the nature of what she does and a lot of the stresses that it involves. Sometimes I'm like, well, you know what? Even though I'm in this kind of position that I am right now, at least I get to switch off and just do that reset. No matter what happened in that day, maybe I can just switch off and and reset tomorrow, and if there's something bugging me at work, I'll sort it out tomorrow or whatever. You know Mm. what I mean? Mm. But. Who knows? There's 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 two there's two sides to that coin. <laughs> yeah, I, I I take Buddy's side on this one. I I agree. That like that reset is how I've survived many shit jobs. <laughs> <laughs> I I was just thinking like I'm kind of because like I don't I I don't care about my job enough to purposely bring it home and worry about stuff. Mm. But like my job causes me to have anxiety, which I'm like I'm not sure if that's the same like. 
I mean, that's a whole different topic, uh, really. But like, for example, the other morning, I just woke up and I was really anxious about like, going to work. And, pe- and I, tr- you know, try and explain to people, it's like, why? Why are you worried about it? I'm like, I just like the idea of someone yelling at me today, the idea of like it's something like that. It was just making me anxious all morning. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I know I'm not purposely trying to think about it or something, but it's like, I can't help it, I guess. Like it just, cause it, wor- it, and, and like, I, it. Yeah, I, for sure. I think it really, ca- like Clerk specifically really captured that, you know, because regardless of what job you have, there are very particular stresses that come with it. And, you know, granted the, the in this movie, everything's jacked up to the nine. It's as sort of like Buddy said, like, you know, you switch off the end of the day, you lose the with the anxiety of that job. It's just like, if I remember like once you're working at McDonald's, right? Man, like it's, you realize that it's so unimportant that that burger's out in fucking three minutes, right? So unimportant. Mm. Yet that stress is still there and it's forever there because it's what that job entails. And the second you leave that job, you're like, what the fuck is all of this? But knowing that you have to go back there tomorrow and you're probably going to get yelled at by some fucking shit mum, you know, because you, you, she thinks that you murdered her child because you accidentally yeah. put pickles in her burger. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's the thing. The worst. <laughs> and like, yeah, like that. Yeah, no, I totally relate with you, dude. That's spot on. And I think that movie Absolutely. captures that. Like he said, if you think about it, if you think about, let's use, I don't know, fucking Endgame as an example. Like Endgame, literally the world is fucked and there's, the stakes are as high as they can be. When you think about Clerks, there's stakes there, but it's realistic stakes and it's like tiny. Yeah. <laughs> but when you're in that job, they're the stakes you have. They're the stresses that you have. And I think it captures that well. And they're yeah. more important because they affect you directly. Exactly. Fuck the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I, I think before moving off this guy to the last thing, I I I, I often think because I I'm never I'm not either character, like but I, at times I feel like I'm both. Like there, there's sometimes where I guess I'm more like worrisome or whatever, but then there are also times where I just fuck customers and like someone say shit to me and I would be like and I'll just be a smart ass back or whatever. So I, I, that's why I kind of like about clicks. I'm like, I'm neither character exactly, but at times I feel like I can relate to both. You know, mm. I can cherry pick uh, look, depending on what my mood is and, and so thoughts and so forth. Yeah. Oh, in that case, um, I'm hundred percent Dante, like unquestionable. Oh, I would, I would toe the line. <laughs> I would complain the whole way through sound like such a whiny prick the whole time that that's the part that I related to in that movie. Like, holy crap. I wish. Well, I would probably have less warnings at my work if that was me all the time. But, you know, that's a, that's a yeah. thing. I, I think I'm Dante when it comes to following the rules and not abusing customers and stuff. Um, and definitely I'm, I'm Randall when it comes to the most trivial bullshit Shit. <laughs> and, and, and mindless discussions and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, um, yeah. Sorry. Here you go. Have you got one more thing before we move on? Yeah. I just wanted to bring up a, a few quotes that I really liked from the movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, First one is, uh, well, the first, the, I guess the this one's from Randall. Um, this job would be great if it wasn't for the fucking customers. Oh, man. Uh, That's, I, I, I always loved that one. Yes, I would wear um, that on a T-shirt. <laughs> yeah, put it on a T-shirt. Yeah. I'll, wear it to, I'll wear it to work. Yeah. Um, and then the other one was from Dante, and I love this. Uh, after the customer gets the his hand out of the Pringles, and he's like, a little word of advice, my friend. Sometimes you got to let those hard to reach chips go, <laughs> and I'm just like, it's so philosophical yeah. with what he's del- with delivering. Like what he's telling that guy is like got nothing to do with the chips at all. <laughs> and and you know that when he was uh, Kevin Smith was writing that line, he's like, this is some good shit. Like, this is some philosophical <laughs> stuff, shit. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, other really cool stuff I want to bring up before we kind of moved on. Uh, I loved that um, Caitlin was the 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 never ending love interest. Mm. Um, in that, obviously, that's I think that's a throwback to uh, the Degrassi character Caitlin, who um, I think yeah, Kevin actually. Smith was obsessed with. Who was uh, obviously one of my favorite characters in Degrassi that was dating Joey at the time, um, and it never really worked out between them, even though they're on again, off again for the whole entire run of that show, even in Next Gen. Uh, the other thing that I really liked was the Savages line, that seems Quite to be like a through line. Down bunch of savages in this town and it brought it's brought up twice and it's also yeah. used uh later on in more rats as well yeah. <laughs> um so it's obviously a familiar term uh i'm not sure if that's deliberate of uh, kevin smith's vocabulary or it's because of maybe a regional thing from where it was brought up and it's used deliberately i, thought, or, I think it's i thought it maybe it is regional 
or something. Regional, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then that's, that's probably the two main things that I really wanted to uh, bring up before we moved on. What the hell are you doing here? Don't you play an hockey one? The boss called. Arthur fell out. Why the shutters closed? Someone jammed gum in the locks. Bunch of savages in this town. Right, so the, the last kind of question I want to go over before uh, for this episode is about how this movie was made because... Um, but he brought up a good point when we was discussing during this episode, which is like, would this movie even get made? What, how would a Kevin Smith uh, exist in this in this world today? And I was like, well, fuck, you're actually you're actually right because I would like to imagine if a Kevin Smith was coming up these days, I would imagine he's someone that put, maybe he um, the same the same way I guess I think about a Tarantino or something. I'm like, well, aren't these people if they were born younger, they're growing up now, they would probably. I guess, get into making short films on YouTube and stuff like that. And eventually they would uh, have their shot at making a, uh, a, sh- a feature film and stuff like that. But where would they try and market it and who would actually buy up their sorts of films? So it's like, do you, let's just go with Clerks because then we're getting too, too far out the ballpark if we don't go with Clerks. But imagine a Kevin Smith is coming up now, makes a movie, not exactly Clerks, but he's a more up-to-date version of Clerks, I guess. They shoot it on a fucking iPhone or something. Um, I guess if you was going to invest money these days, like like we was saying before of all those movies, they have shot on iPhone. You, all you need to invest in is like good sound equipment, really. Uh, a lighting kit or something like that, but you can shoot on iPhone. Looks looks good enough, so that's, that's where you're going there. Um, where would you reckon you would even take a movie like this and do you think anyone would buy it? Is it heading over to Netflix? Is it heading over to a streaming service? What, what do you think, buddy? Netflix is going to pick it up for a 10-episode run of 50-minute episodes. Uh, actually, 13 episodes of 50 minutes. It'll go three episodes too long. Uh, people will love it, and then it will get canned after season two, and yep. the internet will go crazy. <laughs> See, the thing is, this exists, and it, like, and it got made in, in, in Geelong. There's a that TV show uh, that ro- oh, yeah, rostered on. Yeah. Like, ro- Ross it on. Yeah. Oh man, that, that that happened. How how much more identifiable is that show for where I work? Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, like that. I think that's the situation. It would be a YouTube series, and then it'll be picked up. But uh, I, the issue that I have, and then this could be this is that butterfly effect shit, right? So without the likes yeah. of Kevin Smith or you know Richard Linklater, like Slacker and that sort of stuff, is or even Tarantino with the idea of these movies with that level of of just unnecessary discourse, like whether. I think that has shaped where we are now in terms of the content we make. Because, like, things like Clerks, you know, if you think about shows like Workaholics and, like, Always Sunny and, like, thing, like shows that have similar-ish in tone and they all exist because of that back then. Um, so it, it, it is almost a chicken versus egg. So if someone was to make that now, a Clerks now it's in a market that's saturated with that stuff. Almost every show has some sort of unnecessary banter about, you know, what yeah. like Game of Thrones or, you know, some pop culture. Like pop culture references are so prevalent in everything. Like if you, if you think about Big, ba- Big Bang Theory, like it's... No, I don't want It's like 10% sci- actual science stuff, at, you know, 60% bad TV show and 30% pop culture references. Yeah. Yeah, you know I mean, so like that show is entirely based on what Kevin Smith has almost brought to the industry, except without relatable characters. That's spot on. <laughs> it's 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 weird thinking about like, you know, back in the day you think of someone like um Fincher and, you know, he did a lot of music video clips to kind of Yeah. Get his style, really. Get his style and 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 find his way and then kind of earn the trust of getting a a, a script and and getting picked up there. Um, what what's the model now? Is there someone out there going and and shooting their own stuff and and doing it the D- DIY method like well, Kevin Smith? Or do you even need to do that now? Can you just pitch things straight to a a Netflix or a, a, a more less less a HBO but like a Hulu or, or an Amazon Stan, or something like that? Australia. Stan original. You don't really. Thing. Or even Apple now with their streaming service, they're going to need original content as well. Instead of them kind of before cherry picking the best content that they could get there's so many other platforms that just need to fill for content now like mm. is it just easier to go that route for people or yeah well the the one example i like when you said is there anyone like coming up uh like an indie filmmaker that's kind of getting picked up of recent memory the most recent person i could think of was um gareth edwards 
who did um, Rogue One, obviously, yeah. and like Godzilla. But before he, the, the only one movie he'd done before Godzilla was called Monster or Monsters or whatever it was called, and that was a rather really small, as far as the, it's small indie movies go these days, really, I guess. But that was a rather small indie movie where they literally just went around with actors and filmed stuff. You know, got told, "Hey, you can't film here." Yeah, no, gorilla. we're not filming. Yeah, we're, we're just we're just doing what he. Yeah, gorilla, gorilla stuff. And he did that one movie for really cheap. Um, put it together. The uh, I can't remember both actors' names that are in it. Um, fuck, I'm mental blanking on the guy. The guy's the most famous one. But um, it, they did that. They were all friends. They made that movie, small fucking love story movie basically. Um, and he taught himself special effects. Like we would teach ourselves spe- special effects now, YouTube tutorials on how to use After Effects and etc. That's how he learned how to do everything. And then after that movie, someone was like, "Do you want to make Godzilla?" Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it, that's probably the most recent big jump of someone who was so small and then got picked up. So it's like I don't know if the idea of all these independent filmmakers like working these days and, and stuff like that. Scott Mc, Scott Mc, uh, Scoot McNary. Scoot McNary, thank you. Yeah, Scoot McNary from, um, and he was in like Dark Knight, uh, the Batman v Superman and shit like that, which is where people know him from. Um, but yeah, he's the most uh, gorilla example I can think of. But yeah, you're probably right. Like Kevin Smith makes Clerks. Maybe, he, maybe it's an internet series. Maybe someone sees it, says, hey, come make it for Netflix and stuff. Especially if we're talking about now, the year we're recording this in, in case you're listening years from now, fuck who knows. But like 2019, you, this year is like, we already have all these streaming services, Netflix, Amazon, et cetera, all out there. But now is a time when you have like Disney and uh, the Apple thing coming up and who knows what the fuck else. And all these places are actually searching for shit currently. So it's kind of a good time to be a director, producer, writer or whatever, I guess, because places are actively searching for people to make TV shows, original TV shows, original movies for the streaming services. And for all we know, five years from now, a lot of these could go bust and there'll be a lot less opportunities again. But at the moment, Absolutely. it's a pretty good fucking time, I, I, mm. I would say, if you look at I think, uh, what's um, around. YouTube and viral sensations, like you look at someone like um, Cole Bennett, who uh, does all the music videos and now all like kind of rappers kind of come to him and that's what he can do with all the effects and stuff that's kind of him made his name. Um, and his company, I guess, with Lyrical Lemonade. But then you also are people trying to go viral. It's harder to go viral with a movie, I guess, than, than you know, because you have to make it first. I guess you've got yeah. other people at age 24. It's not like music now. You can go viral on YouTube and all of a sudden you're signing record deals and labels. It's you, a little bit. SoundCloud, man. Here's my SoundCloud link and my viral <laughs> tweet. <laughs> Yeah, my viral tape. <laughs> Do you think the ability, like the ease that comes with making it now, is actually a detriment to it? Because think about it, like when Clerks was made, there was you know an X amount of budget just to get the equipment, like that you had to commit to making it a hundred percent. Where this day and age, people can just sort of throw shit together. And so, do you think this this is a better? Back then, there was a way to, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Sort of like the wheat from the chaff is the reference I'm thinking of, but yeah, I'm using yeah. it incorrectly. I get what you're trying to say. But yeah. yeah. Like, do you think that has, that would change now? Cause people could be like, ah, oh, I'll put this together and then get halfway through and go, nah. I, I think you could say the same for basically nearly all creative industries these days. I could go shoot a movie tomorrow. I could write a book tomorrow. I could start creating a massive digital artwork with, a couple hundred dollars on my iPad or whatever, you know what I mean? I could start making a full album using fucking garage band. I, you know, the list of examples obviously go on the, the, the access to uh, easy technology and equipment and stuff we have these days. Um, if you have a up to date iPhone or smartphone between the apps and stuff that you could get for free and or buy combined with the camera on that thing, and maybe just an upgraded microphone for it, you have a fucking movie making studio equipment, music, whatever you want to do. Like there's just everything so i guess there's pluses and negatives to that it's like it is really easy for people to get into it but at the same time it's really easy for people who want to get into it for the wrong reasons i guess Mm -hmm. and in the day and age where we're filled with content creators and influencers um you know people are chasing that that one hit wonder for music movies photography i don't Mm -hmm. whatever people are always chasing the, the the thing there who may not who may not have ever tried it if the level of entry w- required that little bit more effort or money or learning or anything like that. Yeah. 
But how do you feel about that, buddy? Yeah, I think that um, the one thing that is not easier to do with all the technology is to come up with the idea and be able, able to execute mm. it properly and something yeah. that hits. So no matter what comes with the ease of technology and all that stuff, like, oh, that's made easier, coming up with the actual intellectual property and, and, and being the creative idea and something that's awesome, yeah, that's still not easier, I guess. <laughs> no, yeah, you're, you're right. I reckon you're right there. Um, all right, well, that, uh, that'll do it for this first episode of Radio Movies. Um, please be sure to take any trash with you while leaving your area. You can find Buddy Watson over at dashgamer.com on the Dash Culture podcast every fortnight talking about pop culture, movies, and gaming. And be for sure to follow him on Twitter at Buddy Watson 12. You can find Ryan Betson over at youtube.com slash the pop culturist talking all things PlayStation on For the Players and wrestling. I don't know how you actually do you think wrestling on the young and the wrestlers and you can no, follow no. him on Twitter. <laughs> you can follow him on Twitter at Haggard MC and you can find myself right here on explosionnetwork.com on one of our movie games or TV podcasts like RK Couch or What Do You Want to Watch and you can follow me on Twitter at Vivaladil V R V A L A D I L. Please be sure to review this podcast on Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening, if you can review on that service. Or tweet at Kevin Smith and Jason Muse and tell them where we rock and we're making this podcast and they should send us a digital copy of the upcoming <laughs> movie to uh, watch before it's released. That would be great. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll see you here next week where we'll be watching more rats. So make sure you do your homework, everyone, and watch that before next week's episode. Snoochie boochies. Try the cow tipper. Dun, dun. Dun 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 dun